Hello everybody, Paul Wyrostek, spiritual teacher, channeler of healing, blessings, unconditional love to all of you. And I would like to do this video and a series of these videos on misconceptions of twin flames. Okay. And this doesn't have to be necessarily twin flame oriented. It's, this could be, you know, even soulmate oriented. Okay. Now we have to understand that a lot of twin flame energy, all, okay, um, empaths, beings of unconditional love, we've gone through a lot of trauma. We've gone through a lot of trying times to say the least in the past a lot of us had at least one narcissistic parent right we've all we've gone through a rockier road than say people that aren't as awakened right through their lifetimes everybody's on their own path but we've gone through a lot of trauma we have a lot of or at a time have a lot of uh, anxieties and fears and, and things like this that have stemmed from our childhood all the way up, right? Teens, 20s, 30s, wherever you're at. So what happens is these things surface later in life to be released. Now, a lot of people that aren't ready, they'll run from these things. They'll run from the, the it's scary. They don't want to feel these things. But we're on a twin flame union, Okay, we have been, and especially through 2020, there's going to be a lot more twin flames actually meeting in physical uh, worldwide or connecting while being on the planet at the same time. Whether you know that, know them, ever meet them in person or not, the twin flame connection is there ready to be made. Now, here lies in the problem. Well, not a problem because it's a path, but um, a lot of people twin flames or empaths, right? Beings of unconditional love have not gone through the proper healing and the clearing. A lot of you already know this. I had, I had a healing and clearing session from my teacher uh, every two weeks for three years. I had a lot to go through. I was also learning how to hone, learning what the, all the energy movement and everything that was going on around me, right? So it was a lot of my... Uh, um, honing my channeling craft, if you will. So, but through all this, I was able to get myself to the frequency of meeting a twin, meeting my twin flame, okay? And so being able to be at that level because I did the healing. Clearing, what is clearing? It's clearing traumas, cords, attachments, blocks, Right. This could be anything from psychic attack. This could be karmic. This could be, you know, um, blame, shame, guilt, unworthiness, um, not feeling lovable. All right. This is chakras. This is the whole bit. All right. So we're clearing energy that that is prohibiting you from actually being able to take action steps and walk through your own fire. OK, because we have to walk through our own healing. OK, so I assist all my one on one clients. Whether cell phone or on messenger and through my group healings by clearing energy from source energy to your higher selves and that we're clearing that energy. The attachment to a specific trauma, for example. So, for example, if you're terrified of water because you almost drowned. And I could go on hundreds and hundreds of examples like this. And you just, or it's a past life and you're just terrified of water. During one-on-one -on -one healing sessions, group healings, if you're on your healing path, um, you can release, say, the, the trauma or the tragedy of the past life or something that you visualized or witnessed in this life or maybe experienced to once layers release, you're able to heal and then bring in healing light. You're able to heal and then next thing you know, you're an amazing swimmer. I've seen it for like 14, 13 years now with thousands of clients, thousands and thousands of healing sessions. Okay, so I've seen a thing or two and I lived it. Okay, many traumas. Trauma. Okay, post-traumatic stress. 
I could go on and on with this. So we clear and we heal energy, bring in healing energy. So we have to be, then we have to face each other inside of us, right? Because a lot of us have had a lot of unworthiness, lack of self-love, lack of self-worth, all of this stuff. We don't want to open our heart. We don't want to love. We don't trust. We've been hurt. We got all these issues, right? All this baggage. But, and it, there's usually a self-loathing in there or some sort of unworthiness or self-sabotage. So this is where the higher self and the twin flame, this is the true twin flame union. It's when your higher self and your ego or your higher self heals the ego and you become one. So, but you're not going to see that as a higher self. Some people don't even want to look at themselves in the mirror. A lot of people loathe themselves or hate themselves and don't even realize it. How well do you take care of yourself? How well do you nurture yourself? Do you exercise? Do you take care of yourself? Are you eating properly? Are you punishing yourself in one form or another? Mental punishment. How do you talk to yourself? So there's usually this part, and I, I was at a stage of my healing many years ago, or before that, um, to where I hated myself. I hated everything. I hated life. I mean, oozed hate for life. That's how, you know, I explained it to a client today. Visu imagine like a vampire, you know, opening up the curtains and letting the vampire, the sun hit the vampire and it's hissing and it's steaming and it's burning from the sun. That's what the light, that's what love can feel like when you're far in the dark. I know I'm talking to somebody here. So there has to be enough clearing and healing for you to be able to face yourself inside and go, hey, nudge, nudge. Can we talk? I want to, can I apologize to you? So there's, and that's where it helps to actually look at yourself in the mirror, look in your eyes and say, who are you? Who are we? Higher self, ego. But one of us, it's usually the higher self, has to say, approach the ego but it's even, it would even be more healthy if the ego, right? Because you have to do this. Your ego drops and you approach your higher self because your higher self never left you. You left your higher self, whether you know it or not. But you welcome in the light. You welcome in healing. You connect to universal oneness by just saying universal oneness, higher self. Today, I'm beginning to receive healing. I'm blessing, I'm blessing you, Universal Oneness. I'm giving permission, Universal Oneness, for you to heal me. So, and there needs to be healing. And if anybody needs assistance, um, I do one-on-one -on -one sessions worldwide. You can uh, check out my uh, website, scroll down my timeline, um, if you're seeing this on Facebook, and you'll see what I do. Or watch my Twin Flame video, January, it says Twin Flame Healing on YouTube, January January 22nd. And that's like seven days away from when I'm posting this right now. So January 22nd, I'm doing a big group twin flame healing. But this isn't just for relationships. This is for all relationships. This is healing to relationships, relationships and self. All healing is like layers of an onion. So if you've done other group healings, you're on a path. If you're doing one-on-one -on -one sessions and group healings, you're on a path. Okay. But you have to be willing to heal, whether it's through me, somebody else, through meditation, through your own self-healing, whatever it is. We just need, we just want you healed. That's what this whole path is about. That's why I'm here on this planet, to assist people on their spiritual path as a teacher and a channeler. Misconception of Twin Flame. Number one, because I'm doing series of these videos is people want to feel whole when they're empty. So they look outward for their twin flame. They want to jump over all the lessons and they want to go straight to the top and think the twin flame is going to make everything okay. Wrong. Because when two twin flames meet like this, it's disastrous and it, it's absolutely horrendous because all that twin flame is going to do is pull everything out and you're going to do that out of each other. So you have to be at a really high level, elite level, to help in a healthy way meet your twin flame. Okay, so a lot of relationships, people think they're with their twin flame. They're not. They're with a soulmate that 
has a good polarity pull on you or on each other to where it's pulling out the shit. And you notice relationships in the past, that's what it does. It pulls out your junk, your insecurities, your fears. And, and what do we want to do? We run. So how do we run? We push that other person away. Then we hate ourselves. Then we're resentful. Then we, we can't even believe we push the person that we love more than anybody away. And now we hurt them. So now that's the last thing we wanted to do was hurt them, right? Sound familiar? Sounds like my past relationships way back in the day before my healings. So I've been there, done that. Everything I teach, I teach with, uh, through all my one-on-one -on -one sessions. I'm teaching through the whole clearing and healing. I'm, te I'm teaching and I'm showing, I'm showing you how that I have been there. I have been, done that. I know the way out. So we have to walk through this and it's ugly when we're purging. When you meet, when you meet the criteria or the standards energetically to your higher self and universal oneness, that you've made that connection to where there's no two of you inside you. There's no talking in your head back and forth. How many people have, have all this loud blah, 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 blah in their mind? You're having a conversation with yourself. Guess what happens when that twin flame union meets? Guess, that hap guess what happens when you're ascended and you're connected to universal oneness and your higher self? The two become one and you become I am. I am that I am. I am is the first thing. There's many stages, but I'm doing this in a simple way. Imagine universal oneness source itself. Then there's the I am. That was the first moment you were your own spark of source. You became I am, but you didn't even know who. It was just I am. I, I am. I'm just, I'm aware that I am. Higher self is the product way after that. Then there's the soul that comes from the higher self. Okay, so there's, there's stages in this. So by that twin flame meeting, you've leapfrogged over the twin flame energy and you've reconnected to your I am presence. Somebody is hearing me right now. Fall in love with yourself first. Because if you keep going out there, and this isn't just twin flames, we're talking all relationships, family, friends, soulmates. Soulmates are stepping stones to get each other up to the twin flame level whether it's this lifetime or other lifetimes self mastery when two people get on when two people are close or right on that path of self mastery the the twin flames meet and then you still have shit to work on because hey life is a fun path of healing and releasing yay so if you're aching for your twin flame and there's an emptiness in your heart flags red flags should be going off you got healing to do inside. You won't, you won't be able to meet that healthy person because you're going to keep attracting to you the exact same thing as you. It's a mirror. Oh, I keep attracting assholes. Oh, I keep attracting these bitches and they all are the same and blah, 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 blah. Look at you. Maybe they're mirroring what you're doing to them. All right. Love, healing to everybody from Universal Oneness. Don't forget to sign up for that Twin Flame Healing. Scroll down my timeline. You'll see all the ads for it. All right. Um, and I'm going to post my website under this post on YouTube. Okay. So you just go into the description. Boom. Goes right to my website. You can book. It's $25. And then uh, check out my website, too. You can check out how I do one-on-one -on -one sessions, the pricings, and all that fun stuff, too. So, blessings to all of you. Much more to come. Let it be done. And so, it is done.